Well, good morning, everybody. This is Chris Quinn from iOvations, and welcome to the webinar on why double down with XDR and MSSP. Today, iOvations is hosting this call in tandem with uh, Overwatch, and I am also being joined uh, for this presentation by David Barton, who's the CTO of Overwatch. David, would you uh, like to introduce yourself? Sure. Good morning, everyone, and thank you, Chris. Uh, definitely appreciate uh, the introduction. Um, I'm the CTO for um, Overwatch. Um, I'm a security guy by trade. Uh, and now I'm, I'm wearing a technology hat. I've been doing this for 25 plus years, um, and uh, look forward to, uh, to talking about XDR and, and how we can help. Sounds good. Thank you. I think you and I have the uh, same amount of time in the flight simulator and cybersecurity. So it's great to have you on the uh, call with us today. So um, before we dive into um, the premium content that we're providing today, I thought it'd be important just to give you a quick highlight of iOvations and who we are as an organization. Um, iOvations was founded 15 plus years ago. Um, focused uh, value-added reseller in the cybersecurity space. Um, that has been a, a, a true hallmark of our organization over the years where we haven't really expanded uh, beyond cybersecurity. And there are a couple um, very strategic things about that. It really enables iOvations to have a, a level of focus on the overall solutions that we bring to market, um, the client engagement that we have across a multitude of verticals and various sizes. Um, and, you know, a true testament has been a lot of the longstanding relationships that we've had with our clients over the years and really focused in on outcomes um, that are required for these various organizations to better enable their business and ultimately secure their business. Um, some, of the, some of the things that iOvations does uh, beyond just um, you know, the resale of product sets is we put a lot of engineering acumen around the solutions that we represent. Um, there's uh, a lot of design um, capabilities that iOvations embodies. Um, we do a tremendous amount of implementation of the various solutions across the ecosystem and we have a number of metal programs um, that has a very specific deliverable for uh, optimization of those services to just ensure that uh, these solutions and the efficacy of the solutions are in alignment with the outcomes that our trusted clients uh, map out for us and that we consult with them on. Um, in addition to that, we're always on the front burner looking at um, the evolution of the cybersecurity space and many of the compelling solutions that are being brought to market to distill that down to what we view as being best in class uh, from a technology perspective uh, relative to cybersecurity. But we also factor in um, other elements to this. Um, how do these solutions integrate? How do these solutions get operationalized uh, in a very effective way to provide the level of agility that's needed uh, for our clients uh, to mitigate risk across a very expansive enterprise ecosystem? From a geo-focus point of view, iOvations, um, I had touched on earlier, has a confluence of clients um, extending the reach across the Eastern United States with great representation in a multitude of verticals and various customer sizes. So that's a, uh, you know, a good um, real life and, and living um, proof uh, point of the engagement that we have with our respective clients. Uh, we see how these uh, solutions are being employed, what works, what doesn't work, um, how we can add in our value well beyond just the procurement phase of it and, and be more of an extension of the enterprises that we interact with to ultimately ensure that 
there's cohesion and continuity across the cybersecurity stack. And um, the ultimate goal is to drive efficacy for these organizations and better business enablement. So in terms of the content today, you know, why XDR and why an MSSP? I wanted to just give a context of, you know, a couple pillar points here that are the compelling drivers behind um, what our mission is. So at Ovations, I did touch on, we've done classic resale, um, but based on my background in the OEM space in executive leadership roles for major providers of cybersecurity, Throughout my journey, I've just noticed, um, you know, an unbelievable proliferation in uh, the number of solutions that organizations are employing, the various tool sets that they're employing, and the challenge of getting operational coordination across all of those disparate solutions to really drive effective outcomes. And over the past three years, I've been researching um, based on a catalyst of feedback from a whole host of uh, clients and just people within my network on a challenge around uh, monitoring of services, right, and, and getting high fidelity yield out of alerts uh, that are coming forth and what action can these organizations take to shore up their defenses but just as important, mitigate the risk, um, also be able to remediate that risk as it starts to germinate within their given organization. So, you know, that led me to uh, forming a partnership with Overwatch. So Overwatch is um, a market leader in managed security solution platforms. Um, we have formed a very strong alliance and we were brought together uh, based on some commonality in terms of underlying platforms and the extensibility of a platform to be a next generation offering to provide high fidelity yield on alerting, provide very actionable insights, uh, be able to um, lay the groundwork to expedite through these types of events with uh, a focus on, you know, minor events, um, critical events, major events, and how they all in interconnect um, and end up uh, proliferating over a period of time, which ultimately these things can lead to massive data breaches. So what we have set out to do is uh, provide an XDR solution and. We'll go a little bit more into the XDR element of this as we progress through the presentation. But our goal was to uh, put eyes on glass 24-7, right? And, and the predominant focus of this is a yield that's actionable. And that yield is actionable beyond just what you would view as traditional um, EDR or MDR. Uh, really uh, putting a lever point or a focus point on the X. And the X is all the data islands that are out there and the various resources within the um, enterprise ecosystem. And the importance of having visibility into those resources to be able to correlate and start to build a story of where you are in terms of a potential threat and exposure to your organization. How do we do it? As I referenced earlier, we do this, you know, in tandem with Overwatch. The Overwatch team, we've settled on a, a platform here at iOvations, and through our relationship with Overwatch, they use the exact same platform that provides the level of extensibility that we think is required um, to provide a high yield and high levels of efficacy as it relates to events. Um, and we co-manage that. And we do this by leveraging the underlying XDR platform, the human intelligence that Overwatch uh, provides, the human intelligence that iOvations provides, the know-how um, in terms of our interaction with our clients and also our prospects to formulate 
a solutions that that is very focused on end game to identify high risk events um, and be able to remediate these in an effective way. In terms of who we do it for, the enterprise is very wide and um, many different shapes and sizes. This solution, you know, another hallmark of the focus that we've uh, put into play to bring this solution to market is looking at a platform that's highly extensible. And by extensible, I mean it will be able to address, you know, the needs of the small business, the medium business, and the largest of enterprises, and be able to lever that in a way where, you know, when we look at um, cyber attacks, they're very targeted. Uh, but sometimes uh, the focus of an attack could be indiscriminate. And there's a whole host of threat actors that are out there, whether they be hacktivists, whether it be internal threat, whether it be nation state, whether it be cyber criminals. Um, they are uh, far and wide in their reach. And it's very, very important for organizations to take this seriously and understand how dynamic the attack surface has become and how weakness, weaknesses within the arsenal can be exposed, whether those are you know, human resource weaknesses where some organizations don't have a SOC stood up, um, they may have many disparate solutions and they're very busy in their day job to ensure the efficacy of those solutions to maintain continuity of the business and we do this service to complement the investment that has been made and to enhance the overall efficacy of these solutions to really streamline operations. In terms of why we do it, I did touch on you know, the various threat actors that are out there. And as I progress through this in the next slide, I think it's pretty important to be the master of the obvious here. Um, over my 25 years of being in cybersecurity, um, I've seen um, threats and attacks uh, be nuisance-oriented, predominantly focused against uh, HTTP, SMTP, um, DNS, um, to name a few. And over the past years, um, especially since 2010, we've seen a massive, massive proliferation in terms of the use of uh, corporate assets and the expansion of how they uh, lever assets, whether they be in a cloud scenario uh, via SaaS or infrastructure as a service. Um, obviously, COVID has um, heightened the overall requirement for organizations to be very agile and nimble. And now you have remote workforces using disparate devices. and we have uh, exponential growth in data islands that exist out there. And we need to have a overarching viewpoint across this um, ecosystem to coordinate um, not just visibility, but to coordinate and correlate what's happening at an event level and also um, in terms of the response to these given events. And, what are these events starting to tell us in the story that is unfolding right before our eyes? So David, you know, one of the things that I think would be compelling here uh, from your purview on, you know, why we do it from, uh, from an XDR point of view and even the importance of um, um, an MSSP type of an approach, based on your experience, if you could just highlight a couple key points um, that were applicable uh, throughout your career? Yeah, I think I'll start with the fact that there are oh, 1,500 plus security endpoint solutions, or not endpoint, but security specific tools that solve a point problem. Um, you know, back in, in February before <clears throat> the COVID uh, debacle that we're dealing with today in the U.S. or worldwide happened, I, I had an opportunity to go to RSA um, the, and I walked through, and RSA, if you don't know, is the largest security conference in the world. Um, they run upwards of 
250 to 300,000 people through that show in a week. And so it's crazy busy. Um, but, but what was surprising to me, and, and I guess on the flip side, not as surprising, is there were 1,500 booths in two different facilities that, that we, we as security practitioners were walking through trying to understand, A, why do we need so many? And B, what value do they provide? And C, how do I get them to talk to each other? And, and I think, Chris, you, you will agree that one of the challenges we faced in the security space from a practitioner perspective, at least throughout my career, is, is I've, I've deployed tons of tools that don't talk well. Um, they, they solve a point problem, but there's no way for me to correlate an activity in one part of my network with another part of my network without some really interesting innovations that don't always exist. And so, you know, where we're at with this XDR approach is the idea that there's a platform and in the platform are applications, if you will, and those apps are those 1,500 booths that we saw, right? Now, 1,500 is, is not uh, the real number, by the way, but, but if, if you go with my analogy for a second, we've got an application or we've got a, a platform that we deliver as part of a service, and in that platform, we deliver things like SIM and malware and network traffic and other apps, but then we plug into that platform your apps, the apps that your customers um, are have already deployed, right? Because they've got a significant investment in their firewalls, in their endpoints, in the proxies, in their email gateways. So the platform approach we believe is the right approach because if we can plug in those other apps, we have the ability to start to give you full detection and response across all of those security controls from a single pane of glass, right? That, that is the, the, their nirvana. When I worked for at and I, I spent a fair amount of time in their security operations center and each analyst had six to eight monitors on their desktop that they were supposed to monitor. If you can imagine what that looks like, um, it's, it's a row of three and a row of three and then a row of two. And you as an analyst, because those tools don't talk to each other, are expected to monitor and watch all this stuff, right? And, and try to catch something bad happening. And if you think about the volume of data that you're dealing with, it's impossible for an analyst to see and catch stuff. It just is. Integration correlation of the of the tool sets and the data is the only way that we get there and xdr is how that happens yeah that's a, that's a great point and you know it leads us it leads us to you know our next talking point here and i think this is a phenomenal illustration to highlight the extensibility requirements um, that are needed in today's game, right? So, you know, we use, and you're going to hear as we go through this, a lot about the Lockheed Martin, Martin Cyber Kill Chain. And the Lockheed Martin Cyber Kill Chain was released, um, you know, it's a very defense-oriented approach. Um, they released it back in 2010. And it was um, highlighting the compelling phases of an attack. And predominantly, it was built around endpoint detection and response and built around a uh, philosophy that, you know, we had a very defined perimeter and we had um, assets from a LAN and WAN perspective with on-site servers, applications, endpoints, and users. But what is amazing about the cyber kill chain is over a period of time, you know, many of the tenants that they laid out, you know, 10 years ago, they still hold true. It's just putting it in a different context, right? Because the goal 
in mapping to the cyber kill chain and we'll frame it out for you as we go along here but the goal of mapping to the cyber kill chain is as you start to see a germination of suspicious activity reconnaissance escalation of privileges exploitation weaponization um progressing right through to um the command and control and data exfiltration. It's extremely, extremely important within the cyber kill chain to be able to intervene in the early innings. And if something was missed in the early innings, having the visibility and the high fidelity to intervene in the later innings, right? As you start to progress towards exfiltration via command and control within a given environment. And as we look at the landscape today, you know, the perimeter still exists, but it's defined differently. You know, most organizations will have their firewall, but the data in the island of data is represented as you go to the dotted circle and you look at the way that employees are accessing resources. And what resources are they accessing? They could be cloud applications, hybrid cloud. They could be accessing via personal devices. It could be vendors that are part of your um, organizational ecosystem. And what assurance do, is, do you have on the security controls that they have in place and the visibility that they have? And it's an expansion of a borderless perimeter to support the enterprise needs and requirements to better enable business. But when you take the context of the cyber kill chain, as a threat actor, whether it be internal insider threat, whether it be nation state, whether it be hacktivists, whether it be cyber criminals, this is an unbelievable canvas to work from. And as we look at this canvas, many of the 1,500 plus solutions that David saw at RSA are being employed as tools to secure these assets, these resources. But from a threat actor point of view, there's opportunity to exploit vulnerability here to get to the data. Right. With the ultimate goal of, you know, perhaps it's a denial of service, but most of the time it's for a data breach. And when we look at XDR and putting it in context and why we love the platform that we've chosen to deliver this managed service, it's extensible. We can ingest from multiple, multiple data islands to gain and garner that visibility. So when events happen and being able to correlate those effectively and leverage machine learning and leverage external threat feeds to distill down to a high fidelity yield, it provides tremendous focus on initial steps that are needed for mitigation, process to and recommendations for remediation, right? And the XDR is next generation type of an approach to support this next generation ecosystem that we're living in. And it's accelerating right now faster than we've ever seen it. Some of the accelerant has been associated with COVID, but this motion was set in place long before COVID. So obviously cybersecurity is complicated. You know, David referenced, you know, via the RSA experience, and, and I think m many of you on the phone have a, a number of solutions, hopefully not 1,200, um, but there are 1,200 solutions, plus or minus, that organizations have the opportunity to make a decision point on what's best for them. But you also have to operationalize those solutions. You got to put management acumen around those solutions. You got to put system health and life cycle management around those solutions. And the more 
that these solutions are levered within an organization, it introduces complexity. All the while, the evolving threats are constantly, constantly maturing and getting much more complex. And the data risk is not just when employees are working, the data risk is at all hours. And having eyes on the wire, looking at it in a highly effective manner, using XDR helps to distill that down. So you gain the visibility quickly, there are actionable insights that can be taken with different pressure points on where you are in the cyber life cycle of a given attack. In addition to that, there's a whole host of complexity around regu regulatory mandates. They're being dri driven at the national level, the state, the city government level, specific vertical level, you know, whether it's healthcare or financial. There's a whole host of mandates. And one common theme is, you know, who's looking at your logs? Who's looking at your events? What actions are being taken? And that's a, that is a challenge for many organizations. In addition to that, it's the alert overload, right? So, you know, the constant tuning of a system. Um, the constant changes that are happening within a dynamic environment and how to make heads and tails on alerts that are coming in. Am I getting inundated with false positives? Are these alerts salient to give me actionable steps that collectively we can take in terms of our detection and ultimately the mitigation steps and the remediation steps to uh, neutralize that. Um, but nonetheless, there is a pretty known uh, challenge for most enterprises that alert overload is real, right? And it becomes even more real as more resources are added in to the enterprise stack. Also, it's expensive, right? We all know, you know, the enterprise solutions that are being bought today, they can do their job, but it's expensive from a soft dollar point of view in terms of human capital, getting an operational cadence built around it. It's expensive in terms of capital outlay on uh, given solutions and the subsequent subscriptions around those solutions to do its job. And we recognize that. And what we look at in terms of the complication of this is how collectively can we go about simplifying this process? And I think it's, you know, it's best stated by David here, um, given that he's the CTO of Overwatch. Um, Iovations is uh, participating in this process, um, vehicle um, managed. Um, offering to our client base but it's pretty important to highlight you know some of the extensible features that um, are key takeaways when you know looking at an xdr platform what's in it for you mr customer to compress overall process around events enhance security efficacy unify and consistently um, have an umbrella over the ecosystem and the investments that you've made. So David, if you could just touch on a couple of your experiences here and some of which we've worked on together, <clears throat> I think that'd be appreciated. Yeah. Um, you know, I think at a high level, some of the biggest things that we see as we're out talking to customers is a lot of the stuff that uh, Chris has outlined here, right? The, the, the point solutions, there's too many. We talked about that. Um, the, the threats, the volume of data, the regulatory pressures. If, if you're not watching that one in particular, guys, you should. Uh, because while New York and California um, are, are kind of leading the charge from a regulatory mandate perspective in the U.S., um, I expect, especially uh, as the data that that we're protecting becomes more and more 
attractive to bad guys that there will be legislative pressures across the U.S., um, whether it's the SHIELD Act or the CCPA. Um, I think every state at some point is going to mimic or maybe add a little bit more to it. Um, on top of that, you're getting a lot of pressure from um, the government for publicly traded companies to be focused on this stuff. So I think what you'll see is more regulatory pressure, not less. Um, what that's going to drive is your customers and our customers saying, hey, can y'all do this? You know, can you tell me how much um, or how secure I am or, or how compliant I am? Regulatory pressures are just going to continue to grow. Um, when you think about alert overload, I, I had an opportunity about a year ago, 18 months ago, to go talk to um, the CISO for DirecTV in Latin America. And we were talking about alerts and how much they get. And he says, Dave, I get about 30 million events a day. And he says, I, I cannot manage that number. Can you imagine what that looks like? 30 million events a day. Um, and so, you know, he's struggling with alert overload. And then I think, I think the last one there, enterprise tool sets um, are expensive, you know, especially ones that are thinking about the bigger picture and the integration and the correlation and some of that work. Most of our mid-market and SMB customers without a service like this can't afford it. They, they can't afford the people, right? We talked about uh, the too many tools, but they can't afford the people who know how to run these tools. They can't afford the capital investment in the platform itself, let alone staffing it to do seven by 24 security operations. Um, it, it just isn't tenable for these companies and they and sadly in the security space uh, i don't think we've done a very good job at building solutions that meet the needs of the mid-market and the smb the good news is with overwatch and iovation we have that we have a game changer we have a differentiator and these are the reasons why um this solution and this partnership is is so critical So getting into the Overwatch managed security platform as a service, just to uh, provide a little bit of context, I, I brought up the, the Lockheed Martin kill chain. And just as a point of reference, um, I think it's um, imperative to outline the eight phases of this. And, you know, I think um, over time, through my experience, the 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 low single digit areas have been recognized as important but you know where the front page news happens is when you get into you know level five through eight right and ultimately you have a data breach but i think they're all equally important to have high fidelity yield in terms of visibility into it and being able to take action, you know, across um, the entire kill chain, because the faster you have the visibility, the faster you can respond, the faster you can mitigate risk, the faster there can be remediation steps that are put into play to neutralize that risk and ultimately enhance the security. And the platform that we collectively use um, uh, via Overwatch, and I'm gonna I'll turn it over to David here in a minute. But what what's really important here is you know think of all the data islands that exist. Think of all the resources that you have within your given organization. Think of the visibility, right, and the monumental task to garner visibility across that and then map it with a salience that's practical and relevant. And one of the things that, you know, we really benefit from by levering this 
platform, which most of the customers will not see this, but these are, this is mission control for our eyes on glass. And this governs, you know, the way that we engage. But this arc that you're seeing in the center of the screen, it depicts the cyber kill chain. It depicts the events that are in the early innings. It, if you go from left to right in a clock, clockwise uh, motion, the level of severity increases the deeper you get into the kill chain. And on the far right, you're getting into the command and control. You're getting into data exfiltration. You're getting into the ob obfuscation um, elements of that kill chain. And all of these need to be addressed. And the beauty of an XDR is being able to insert ourselves, you know, early in the process. And yes, putting major uh, focus on the right side of that arc, but still focusing on the left side of the arc, because anywhere you can intervene and interrupt, you're doing your job, right? Because you're not just alerting, you know, there are very demonstrable actions that can be taken to neutralize that risk. So I'll leave it there and I'll let David, um, you know, I'll stop sharing and David, perhaps you could walk through yep. and just highlight for the folks, you know, what we're seeing on a day in and day out basis, right? And with an emphasis on the alerting and the high fidelity of the, uh, of the alerts and ultimately the actions that we're taking. Sure. All right, can, can you see my screen okay? We can. All right, good. So what you're looking at is the Overwatch platform. Um, and and I, again, I, I talked about platform, I talked about apps, and, and, and some of the easiest way to see what those apps look like are things like machine learn IDS, traffic anomalies. This would be network traffic analysis. That's an, an app in the platform. Malware sandboxing. Right when we see a file go by that we've never seen before, we will grab it and deploy and de detonate it up in the cloud and have a disposition on that file. Um, so if it's good, then we're then we don't take action. If it's bad, we have an opportunity to take action. Um, but what I wanted to walk through briefly, and and I know uh, Chris talked about the, the kill chain. And if you're not familiar with it, uh, 2011 Lockheed Martin came out with a, what they called the anatomy of an attack. And they built this cybersecurity kill chain. And what it lets us do is systematically categorize anomalies and put them in buckets um, of risk. So if you look at this arc from left to right, you've got low risk reconnaissance. You've got as it moves to the right, the risk goes up. Delivery, you've got exploitation, you've got installation of files, you've got command and control. Right? This is where somebody outside of your network is talking to your network, and they shouldn't be. And finally, you've got actions and exfiltration. Here's where my important data is leaving my network. The whole idea of this of this approach is you've got controls to catch things at each one of those stages and the beauty of defense in depth is i might miss it at reconnaissance right because it's a low risk once reconnaissance leads to exploitation i'm going to catch it or once it leads to command and control i'm going to catch it um, no there's not a single tool out there that by itself will catch everything right which is why you have to have integrated tool sets which is where our platform comes into play so i'm going to walk you through just a little bit of what that looks like just to give you a high level um here fyi this is live data this is data in our honeypot network uh, that's getting hacked into on the internet by bad guys we we put it out there on purpose it's live data, but it's not any customer data. 
And just to give you some some perspective, this event happened at 7.05 this morning. So it, it is a legitimate live traffic. But I'm going to walk you through just a, a, a quick um, reconnaissance event. And it's it's low risk, uh, but I'm going to walk you through it real, real briefly. So, for example, I like to talk about user login failures. And most people, you know, they say, well, why, why do you care about that? And the truth is, you know, we all fat finger our passwords on occasion, right? What we don't do is we don't fat finger our password 500 times in a five minute window. So not only does the dashboard have really cool graphics, but it's, it's functional, right? And I'm gonna change this window, by the way, so I can get a little bit more data to show you. In the last day, we've had 560,000 failed logins, right? That's a lot. Um, if I did the math, that's a whole lot per hour, right? Um, but when I talked about the functionality of this platform that my team uses, is we have the ability to quickly sort on what's important. So let's go look at the critical events, right? So we have two critical events here. Now, one of the things I told you that we do really well is we correlate and integrate uh, and normalize data. And in that process, we also add in things like reputation. So if, if Chris is a known hacker and his IP is known as a hacker, we're gonna capture that data. And when we see Chris's IP come through, we're gonna tag it as a known hacker or a known Bitcoin miner, a miner or a brute forcer or a scanner. There's a whole list of reputations that we add to this new record uh, this new data element. And as you look here, you see, here's an example of an IP uh, that's a known brute forcer in the US. So the other thing that we do is we add geolocation. So if you have, uh, if we see an event, for example, come through that's from Beijing, China, and you don't do any business in China, um, we're going we're gonna to pick that up. Right, and we can build rules around that. Um, so geolocation is critical. We'll tell you what type of traffic we're seeing. And what's even better is if we click over here on this far right and we pull up more info, here, here's why paying attention to low risk items like failed logins matter. So here, here is where also where machine learning comes in. So we talk a little bit about machine learning and AI about in how we help find those needles in that haystacks of data, right? The way we do that is we take all that data, we run it through um, seven types of machine learning, and we build baselines. So if you look at this box here, in a typical five-minute window, we, would, we haven't seen any of these events, zero. But in this case, we saw 240 from the same source IP, right? What this number tells me is there's intent. If you and I fat finger a password, it's an accident. We, we made a mistake. There's no intent there. When you've got 240 of those, you have context. And that context says this, this guy or gal is trying to break into my network. So as an analyst, what do I do about it? So we have opportunities here, and this is where the Security Operations Center comes into play. Um, we will get an event like this, and we'll start to run it down. We'll go look at any activity from that source IP anywhere else in the network. Where else have I seen it? Um, I can trigger an email to someone uh, in the Operations Center. I can create a new case. Um, I could run a script or disable the user, right? So let's say my CEO, his, his account is logged in in Beijing, China, and he is in Chicago, right? I could, from here, I could go disable that user. So the idea is we have the ability to take action on these anomalies that we're seeing. To give you more context of the anomaly, we actually capture 
the data, right? So uh, if, if you're a network person, you understand packets. Well, packets are, are very large in terms of storage and they're expensive. So we've turned a packet into JSON and we made it human readable so that you guys can come in and look and see and our, our analysts can also look and see all of the data that led to this detection. Now, what this gets us as well, in, when we talk about correlation, is I can correlate this event across all the data elements in my network. So, and we do that on a dime, right? If I wanted to see all activities from this IP, 10.30.2.57, I could come up here into this search box, 10. 32, I don't remember what that IP was, 10.30.2.57. And I'm going to see all activities and all events with that IP, right? Now I can start to correlate what's going on. And it looks like this device, this IP is really a bad guy, right? And from here, I can, you know, based on the response mechanisms that we've agreed upon, I can take action. Without having this visibility across all of your tool sets, you're not going to see this stuff, right? You're not going to have the visibility, which leads to the correlation. Um, you know, the best way I describe that is, you know, in my office in Chicago, um, I may be seeing a few anomalies and by itself, not a big deal. But if, if I correlate that with the anomalies I see in my office in L.A. and my office in New York, and I see commonalities in these attack patterns, I can start to correlate. We're getting attacked on every front, and now it goes from being a low-risk event to, a, holy crap, somebody's trying to break in our network. That's where this tool set, this platform comes into play. Make sense, Chris? Absolutely, it does. And, you know, a couple of things that you pointed out there is, you know, you're, you're highlighting, you know, the importance of looking at all events and what they could potentially lead to and, you know, the risk score around that. And ultimately, based on the playbook that we, I mean, we have templates of a playbook on actions that we can take, but we also have to make that, you know, pertinent and relevant to our given customers. And we can, you know, go beyond alerting and do some of the initial, initial mitigation, as David pointed out in that example, right? So I think, uh, I think that's very important. The, the other thing, David, that I think is, is compelling and, you know, not all of the, um, the enterprises that subscribe to the service, they don't get to see this, but just on, you know, the backside of this, um, the importance of, you know, some of the thread hunting, right? And things that are being proactively done behind the scenes, um, within the service to, you know, enhance overall efficacy of of the platform for the benefit of our customers that are under the service could you just highlight that real sure. quick yeah so if if you think back to the the idea that we're pulling all of this data together we're correlating it we're normalizing it we're enriching it and we're running it through all of these machine learning algorithms what that leads to is this ability for us to do what we call threat hunting right and I'm going to just give you some, some perspective. Let me clear that. In 24 hours, let's just go 30 days, 150,000 events, roughly, right? Um, with a threat hunting library we built, we can actually help you start to sift through those events and find what's important. So, for example, uh, let's see. Plain text passwords. Let's say um, we see a plain text password come through. In this case, this is a high level report, and you've got Telnet, POP3, Postgres, FTP. All of these 
mechanisms are transmitting clear text passwords, which means anybody can see them if they happen to see the packet go by. And just to give you an example of what that looks like, here's a, let's see, we have a des source destination host. Let's go look in, in the packet itself. If we scroll down through here, we're going to see all the data behind this event, including what the, and I think we've got the, the ability to turn off displaying the password, but um, we're, we can show you what password we're seeing, what user account, all of that data that's leading to this detection. So as an analyst, if we see something like this, we're going to work with you to say, hey, do you know you've got clear text FTP and it's hitting an Internet server that's got a bad reputation? Um, but without having that threat hunting ability and correlation across all of your tool sets like Office 365, you're not going to know who are my top 10, uh, what are my top 10 operations, right? Who are my top 10 users in Office 365 in terms of file access or um, so that's file access, uploading of files, you know, who's sending files out and why are they sending files out? This is that correlation and threat hunting that lets us find those needles again back in the haystack. The other thing that that is is uh, interesting is we can see things like uh, let's see, where is it at? Well, there we go, non-standard ports. So one of the ways that bad guys circumvent your firewall, for example, is once they get in, they turn their product and they tell it, or their, their hacking tools that say, let's send traffic out a port that your pro that your firewall allows, right? Well, we see that we see that it's Oracle traffic that's been sent out a different port number, or uh, let's see AOL traffic or syslog going out a different port number. Why that's important is when the bad guys are trying to hide their behavior, we've got tool sets that will actually see that and go, wait a minute, why is this type of traffic going out HTTP. Non-standard port is really interesting in helping you detect um, those bad behaviors. But again, this is a threat hunt. And again, this will lead us from an operations perspective to go, you know, why am I seeing these files going from this source to this public IP? Um, and then start to take action off of that. Yeah, threat hunting is, is a really cool feature. It, it gives us so much ability to go look at bad things. And one of the, you know, one of the important things is, um, you know, beyond the action that we're collectively taking, you know, via this um, um, command center is the reporting of it, right? And Having having a progressive dialogue on a consistent cadence with our with our clients to you know highlight you know, what we're seeing right and um, you know different examples that David just outlined here in terms of you know threat hunts I mean these things can be you know, wrapped into reports that give you living breathing uh, efficacy on how the solution's working and then ultimately you know action that can be taken to shore up policy or to, you know, ultimately upgrade um, various assets within your environment. Um, it could give you great asset uh, visibility as to what assets are in your environment and any new assets that are being introduced to the environment. So all of these, you know, working together and, and the cadence that we develop not just from a playbook perspective, but levering the reporting and whether that reporting be garnered specific to, um, you know, a compliance request or 
whether it would be focused in on, hey, what are we seeing over the last 30 days within our environment that's compelling that, you know, we need to know about. And, you know, these are areas that we've taken action, right? Those are all important components of us providing a cohesive service um, to you, the customer, to get that better um, actionable insight on what's happening within the environment. And also, you know, measuring it up in terms of the efficacy of the solutions that are in play and how those could be modernized or improved. And that's where Iovations really comes into play here because you know, some of the steps for remediation may be involved, right? It could be a request to enhance your endpoint offering. It could be a request or suggestion to enhance your policy, um, you know, from both an outbound and an inbound perspective. Um, there's a whole host of things that could be recommended uh, for ultimate remediation, but it does start with the visibility of what we're seeing across the ecosystem. And it's not limited just to, you know, traditional legacy type deployment. It's factoring in an expan expansive enterprise using a multitude of resources. So um, we got to be time sensitive on this. So David, perhaps if you could stop sharing and then I could um, yep. just pop into a few more points here. Yep. Excuse me, it defaulted me back to my my start point. So I did I did um reference, you know, from a from a reporting point of view, but in terms of you know, continuous compliance. Let's put into context, the, there's, there's two very pressing elements to providing security and then also adhering to various compliance mandates that a respective vertical has. What I wanted to highlight here is that, you know, job one is to uh, make sure that we're, we're taking actionable steps against compelling events, right? As demonstrated, you know, on what we've laid out and the process that we employ um, using the platform that's in play here. But also being cognizant of a very specific um, compliance requirements. And this just shows the extensibility of the flat plat, of the platform, excuse me, to address things like GDPR, PCI, HIPAA, NIST, right? And give you output on how things are measuring up, right? And I think that's a, a very important deliverable in terms of uh, what we provide in the service. And David, I, I know that, um, you know, through our collective experience on this, you know, if you could just highlight, you know, the importance of some of these reports and what it tells them from a compliance point of view, uh, but things that you take away coming from a, from a CTO lens point. Yeah, I, I think, um, you know, I, I mentioned that earlier. I think we're going to see increasing uh, regulatory pressure in everything we do um and so when you think about the ability to get a, a snapshot of an integrated correlated threat map for your network and start to build uh compliance reporting off of that uh it's it's huge especially if if, if you have any periodic requirement from an auditor perspective to give them reporting. Uh, for example, you know, PCI requires um, some level of uh, repetitive reporting or periodic reporting. And so being able to generate that data out of the tool set saves you a significant amount of time in getting them the artifacts that they need uh, in addition to helping prove that you're doing everything that you say that you're doing. I think all of these are, are critical, um, you know, and again, I mentioned the CCPR or CCPA as well as um, uh, 
uh, the Shield Act in New York, it's only going to continue. And so having a partner like Iovations uh, and Overwatch who are focused on helping you deliver compliance to your customers uh, is huge. Yeah, thank you. So in terms of the process here to simplify the cybersecurity and, and the motion that we go through on delivering the service, you know, a lot of this um, is set up through, you know, very transparent uh, workshop dialogue between iOvations. We also include Overwatch in this process and ultimately our client. And, you know, I've, I've laid out here uh, a progression and from day zero to um, about day 90 is what we view as an acceptable time frame to get all the visibility that we need into addressable network components, um, end users, um, servers, you know, what the enterprise ecosystem looks like the operational motion around it, the specific products that are in play, um, that is imperative uh, for, for us because what we maintain on the back end is a platform to provide the vision and tool sets um, to make sense of it all. Uh, but a critical component is the data that we choose to ingest, right? And ultimately, you know, we put sensors into play within your environment. They could be physical, they could be vir virtual. Uh, but the main theme here is being able to sit down with our prospective customers, even our existing customers as things um, evolve over time to get smart on the architecture that's in play to truly heat map out the security stack you know what's going to stay what will be potentially modernized or or changed out over a period of time and the more visibility that we get into that um, we can map out an onboarding playbook uh, for our customers that is pretty focused on ensuring that we get the appropriate level of ingestion uh, from a data point of view through the sensors, you know, into our environment so that we can effectively monitor. Once we go through that uh, process, you know, in the first 30 days, you know, David had referenced there is machine learning, uh, multiple machine learnings that are in play here. And that machine learning is obviously adding a tremendous amount of intelligence to uh, distilling down these events. And, you know, over the first 30 days, you know, we, we request that there's a project manager on the side of the customer that can work closely with our project manager to ensure, you know, that we are analyzing what we're seeing on a, on a daily or every other day type basis. Once we progress through that 30 day period, you know, we start getting into, um, you know, the final steps of being able to be confident in full production, getting the high yield that we want, um, augmenting the incident response playbook. So, you know, it maps uh, specific to the needs of a given organization and every organization is different and it's dependent upon resources that they have. But Hopefully this, you know, gives you a good perspective of the flow. In terms of um, the offerings and, you know, I, and I'll just be um, pretty transparent here. Um, most of what we do at uh, iOvations is uh, centered around the gold offering. Um, we do have requests for the platinum offering. But in essence, um, the common theme across this is eyes on glass 24-7. Right. From a log storage point of view, it's one year out of the box encrypted log storage. If you need more than that, that's to be discussed, um, you know, with with your iOvation sales rep. We will do it either uh, with a virtual collector or um, a low cost rental uh, sense, a sensor that we would uh, deploy in a given environment. 
Um, but where you start to see, you know, a, a little bit of shift in terms of uh, response on this is, you know, in the silver package, you're getting daily reports from the previous day, right? In the gold package, you're getting 24-7 alerts via email, text with remediation recommendations. In the platinum package, it progresses, you know, providing all of the deliverables that are outlined here to remote remediation of compromised systems, right? And it just gets deeper and deeper in the approach. And what we didn't touch on today are SOAR capabilities inherent within the solution. We did touch on, you know, a couple things that could be done, um, you know, as mitigation as we see events um, start to um, germinate within a given environment and the actions that can be taken. But there are also SOAR components um, inherent within the solution that makes it highly extensible. And as we enhance the motion, you know, with our clients and there's confidence in, in the platforms that they have in play and confidence in the service that we're providing and that trust is earned, we can trigger to uh, phases where SOAR elements can come into play with this, right? And what I would ask, um, you know, hopefully there is interest in terms of what we're representing to you today. Um, what we're finding is as we go through this process with our customers, um, tremendous visibility into understanding the way that our um, customers are operationalizing the technologies in the environment, the true need to um, get high yield, you know, from an alerting point of view. Um, but ancillary benefits come around, you know, from a remediation phases on different steps that can be taken to remediate a situation, how policy can be enhanced, um, how vulnerabilities across the enterprise ecosystem could potentially be um, mitigated by, you know, patching various assets. Um, so there's a whole host of uh, capabilities that are here, but job number one uh, that we've set out for is to identify, you know, high yield on, on these alerts. So we can mitigate the alert fatigue. We can have champions within our client environment that are hyper-focused in on, on their day jobs and not culling through thousands upon thousands of alerts and trying to distill whether it's a false positive or what have you. Um, that's, that's our job, right? Now, there would be collaboration between organizations in the early innings to um, mature that and, you know, read through the results that we see, you know, both from a human perspective and also a machine learning perspective, but it gets pretty tight as we progress through the process. Any questions that you want to ask or any interest in this, we encourage you to reach out to sales at iOvations. Dot com, and one of our salespeople will reach out to you as a follow-up, and hopefully we can have um, some dialogue about this uh, service offering and some of the value that we can bring to light.